don't want what we know out there. How a person can go from really almost nothing to becoming a millionaire by owning rental properties. He would always buy these flip houses and I just remember thinking, this guy is crazy. Why would he buy that house? In the past decade, there's been a huge surge in the peer-to-peer short-term rental market. Become an insider. So you have to know the rules before you get the game. Every second counts. So make every second count. Welcome to the Real Estate Jam. Whether you're just beginning or the best of the best, we're glad you're here. We will share successes, failures, and strategies for the action-taking real estate investor. And now to your hosts, JD and Melissa. Hi guys, welcome to the Real Estate Jam podcast. I'm JD with my lovely and talented co-host. Thank you, JD. How are you? We're doing great. Uh, he's freezing me out here. Super good. Super <laughs> cold in here. Below the camera line, Melissa has a blanket covering her lower extremities. It's hot here still. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, well, I'm uh, super excited to to introduce you guys to uh, a partner at Corcoran Icon, realtor, author, coach, um, and and pretty good all around. Uh, person uh debbie dimaggio um debbie thank you so much for for joining us on the show today finding time for us we really appreciate it thank you so much for having me i'm very excited to meet you i love networking with other agents around the globe it's so important and it's so fun to learn from other people for sure where are you debbie I'm in the, uh, Northern California. I'm looking out to San Francisco and all three bridges, the Golden Gate, the Bay, and the Richmond Bridge in the Oakland Hills. And I also work in the Beverly Hills, West Hollywood area as well. Wow, very awesome. cool. Yeah. Well, Debbie, for those in our audience who, who maybe don't know about you yet, can you kind of give us a rundown of, of how you got started in real estate and where you're at now? Yep. Sure. So I've been selling real estate for over 30 years, close to 35 years. And one of the things I said when I was growing up, people would ask, what are you going to do when you grow up? What do you want to do? Even, you know, after college, I have no idea. The only thing I know I do not want to do is real estate. <laughs> so whoops. <laughs> 35 years later, here I am. I realized early on I didn't want a boss. I realized that I really loved working. I liked working with people. So when I was 25, I wrote a list of things I liked. And it actually, when it all happened, when a couple of years later, when it, I ended up falling into real estate, I realized I was hitting on everything, meeting new people, meeting people from different cultures. I love asking questions. I love learning about other people. I love helping others. I like doing a, different things all the time. I don't want to be tied to a desk. And it all materialized into real estate, which was kind of exciting. And I also the reason why I said I never wanted to be in real estate was because my father was an investor. <laughs> And he was always on the phone. There were not cell phones back then. And he was tied to his phone. And so life was very much committed to him being at home and working and hard to get away. So anyway, here I am. I still love it. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, I guess, can you give us a rundown of what you're you're doing? I know we talked about that you and Melissa are both responsible for herding cats. And I'm, I'm hoping you can share with our audience what it is that you're doing uh, now in regards to the to the coaching and the, the running teams and that kind of stuff. Yep, sure. So very exciting. Um, it was a positive COVID fallout. Our son Chase started to work with us a couple of years ago. He was going to go back to Colorado where he went to school in Boulder and he just got, he ended up getting his license during COVID and decided to stay in California and work with us. So I guess you'd say I'm the team lead because I'm the bossiest <laughs> so, <laughs> and the most control freak. So my husband, Adam, who's actually the broker of our two offices, our Corcoran offices, and I'm the marketing director. And then um, I, we also, I work as the team lead for the, the three of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I also, my other hat is the marketing director of our 80 agents. So 
I, when they come on board, I get them acclimated and go through all the different uh, tech uh, um, back end stuff we have and all the social media and all the platforms for success. And so I get them started, then I coach them and then they're, they're all, I'm always available to them as they need. So I do that part for our, for our 80 agents as my, as I'm one of the partners. So that's what I do for that. Then of course I manage our team and then I've written a couple books and I also do coaching on the side. So I'll coach eight agents you can coach agents anywhere in the world right because we're everything's now on zoom and everywhere else so <laughs> i also coach and i'm just uh today launching foundation for success my five platforms towards building a strong foundation for your business service or brand so it doesn't have to be just a realtor awesome can you, can you tell us a little bit about what that is yes sure sure and so i don't ramble on i'm going to give you exactly Foundation for success. The first one, the first of the five pillars is, is takes the longest. It's the social media one. So I get, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people are on social media, but there's a lot of people who don't really use it for business and they don't have it actually wired. So the first seven modules are include LinkedIn, Alignable, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook business page, Pinterest, getting them set up on social. Now, also as agents, I don't know what it's like elsewhere, but in California, you have to have your DRE number, our Department of Real Estate number attached. So I get them set up properly so they're not breaking any rules, but I get them set up on social media. The second platform is connecting. So it's email and e-blasts. The third is to educate. So newsletters, note cards, postcards touch points, and then websites, blogging, editorial contributions. And then finally, what we're doing here today, collaboration, podcast partnerships and events. Mm -hmm. So it's um, the program I'm just launching incorporates all that. You can also coach with me one on one as well. That's awesome. Um, what I'm, I'm really interested in, and I, I think our audience is, is interested in being the uh, director of marketing for a, a large uh, team, 80, 80 agents, plus your own own personal stuff. I, I'm wondering, when you're talking about marketing, do you distinguish between branding and marketing, or are you lumping that all together? No. Um, well, I'm very, I like, I want everyone to be cohesive. I believe that wh whatever your company is, you need to, go, you know, be cohesive in that, that branding, but there's a, you know, because you want to identify, people need to identify you in as a, you know, you're with Corker and you're at the XP, you're with Keller. People need to be able to find you and identify, but then yes, then we want to pull out. I, I leave, I always speak about this example. I was an agent who, when we started the company and I was meeting with him and he was this very handsome Greek guy and I, he had been in the community forever, but no one knew him. He always dressed nice and he was nice. But he, no one knew anything about him. And so I sat with him. I said, let's go over your bio. And I read the bio and it was like, it was nothing. And I'm like, okay, I know you're Greek. I know you play tennis. And he's like, well, what does tennis have to do with anything? I said, oh my God, Christo, everything. <laughs> I said, you relate to people doing what you love. And that is everything. I go talk about your coaching and tennis. He finally dropped those stuffy suits and just coming to work, thinking he had to wear a suit every day, going to the office. He started embracing his other side. He started doing so much better because he became who he was. He lived who he was. So I just love that story because I really saw this person totally change before my eyes and he was embracing what he loved. So yes, branding on a personal level is also just as important as, you know, identifying with your company. Awesome. And now, now my question is when you're, when you're talking about marketing for lead generation, what are some of the things that you guys are implementing and, and um, you know, how are you, how are you taking somebody who doesn't know who, who you are or, or your company and then bringing them into the, the sales funnel uh, to then help them buy or sell a house or um yeah. So number one, most important, you've got to be out there where people could see you, touch you, feel you. You're an agent. You're pretty similar to an actor. 
your billboards are everywhere, your name's everywhere. That's what we do. We put ourselves out on social. We try to connect with people. We try to meet people. You know, actors are out there, but they're they're not touchable. We we people know us, but we don't know them, right? Same with the celebrities. So you have to make yourself available. You have to be in an open house to someone, whether you're a new agent or a seasoned agent. You need to be there so they can see you and 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 talk to you and relate to you. If you're not accessible, how, you know, not everyone's going to pick up the phone and call you because there's a ton of agents out there. So you really need to work to make yourself accessible. And for a new agent, there's nothing better than being at an open house because yes, a lot of looky lose love to go to open houses, which is great because a lot of times those are sellers looking to see what you're doing. So super important open houses, but also there are buyers that are coming through without agents. So that is the first place really newer agents are going to get their business. And I, it's, tried and tested we have new agents that have come to us who are doing well i would ask chris chris where'd you get that client chris where'd you just get that client where'd you get that client your open house your open house your open house i mean he was he's he was a flight attendant and he did it for quite a while even when he was starting out in real estate he would get home at midnight on friday he would do an open house saturday and open house sunday he would show property during the day he just never said no. And that's one of my, my top tips. Don't say no and don't give me excuses. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, totally absolutely. agree with that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, it's easy to talk about doing an open house. It's a, a lot harder to sit there and, you know, and set everything up and market it appropriately on the front end uh, and, and actually go through it. Everybody talks about open houses. And I think that a, a lot of people are either doing them wrong, not putting the required amount of effort into them, or not doing enough of them for it to make a difference on on right. The radar. It can't just be one and done. It's got to be consistent. Consistency is key. Yeah, we we definitely agree with that. Okay, so so open houses is one way to to get new leads, especially for, for new agents. Um, do you guys implement any type of farming or direct mail, cold calling, any of those outbound type marketing strategies? Um, so it's the, one of the first things I say when an agent sits down with me, a new agent, I said, we've got to do an Excel spreadsheet. We've got to get everyone, you know, start to, you know, write that list out. Then you're going to start to market to that list. It's not that they might buy a house. They might know someone. So you have to be in touch with your sphere of influence, your SOI, super important and keep adding and keep building to it. With that, you can also use that list to send a, a holiday card or a Thanksgiving card. You can also use that list if you know, you're going to send out a newsletter. You know, I'm in a BNI group, Business Networking International, and I, I have so many great resources. And even before that, I always have great resources. I, I share that in my newsletter. So it's not always about, there'll be a little real estate, of course, but then it's like, I have a great gutter cleaner. You know, it's like people need these services or a dog walker was huge. A dog, um, a dog sitter. They're like, what? and then I recap that in last month's, last month's newsletter, I told you about my dog walker. And then someone called me and said, Oh, can you give me the dog walker? I missed that newsletter. So, you know, just being creative, you've got to be creative. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is really good. Um, well, I guess my my question now is, uh, you you do in in your group does a significant amount of volume, but one of the questions and one of the objections that we get from either newer agents or uh, newer in, investors when it comes to doing the the tasks that are required every day to be consistent in your marketing stuff. I don't have time for that. Uh, you know, I, I, I just, something came up or I didn't feel good. My dog got sick. I, you know, what do you do to overcome that piece of it with the people that you're working with? After I blow up, <laughs> I mean, no one's busier than me. I can tell you, I've had a thousand things going on at one time. It's very frustrating. I mean, I, what do I tell them? I mean, if, if, they're asking me, they know me and they know how busy, busy I am and how many different things I do. So if it's not a priority, I mean, I do kind of come down a little bit if they're that lazy. It's like, if you're, if you, you're either going to make the time or you're not, okay, let's plan it. Let's put it on the calendar. Let's calendar it out. 
calendar your workout, calendar your morning routine, calendar, you know, when you're going to do this, but you have to make the time or you're not going to be successful. I mean, you have, I mean, what do they say? Give it to a busy person because it'll get done. Right. I mean, I just kind of throw that at them because it's true. You know, I mean, I'm doing my job. Plus I just help someone get ready for his open house tonight for a twilight tour. You know, I'm doing my job. I'm helping other agents and I'm walking his whole piece through from last week to help build his newsletter or his e, um, e, e, e blast and invite telling him where to go to print the cards, you know, where he should get food and wine attending it tonight. It's like, it's, it's the same thing we do all the time. Get a system, write it down mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> and follow it. <laughs> yeah. I think the following it is the part that I don't think that you can do for somebody else. You can show them, You can build the whole system out. You can show them the success that you've had in the past following the same path. But if they don't want to actually take the action to do the things that are required, there's not much you can do to help them. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of what I, when I'm coaching, uh, it it comes back. I'm really, I do a lot of accountability coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how I've had some success. I got a, um, I've written four books, but one of my friends was working on her book for 20 years during COVID. I said, I'm going to coach you to get this done. (laughs) Now she's on her second book after 20, if you know, it took her 20 years to write her first book. I held her accountable week to week. So if you're coaching with me, I say, don't ask if you don't want, you know, if you don't want help, if you want help, I will help you get there, but I will hold you accountable and you will get it done. Yeah. And it's up to the person. (laughs) <laughs> we, that's a constant conversation <laughs> over here. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess when you say you're holding her accountable, what do you, what does that mean to you? Yeah, assignments. So uh, we would speak for an hour, and um, before we'd wrap up, I would say these were the things that we agreed that you're going to do. I would try not to give too much. I know I take on a lot, so I would say, okay, so by next week. Your, these things have to be done. Are you good with that? Can you get that done? You know, so, and then during the week I check in, how's it going? Just check, nudge, nudge. Um, so you're really just, you're getting them to hold them accountable to themselves, but you they know that I see, I would say, you know, this is going to be on my list until you get it done. Like it's going to be in my head. So I want, you know, can you get it done? And they'll, you know, once they commit out loud, it's, it, it becomes pretty, pretty solid and it gets done. Um, but if people don't commit, I mean, you guys know you, you, you're Melissa, you're a, a, a lead, you know, if, if they, you'll know when someone says, yes, they're going to do it or they're, wishy-washy it's like yeah. they're not going to do it yeah you know, they'll they'll say they'll say like if they're if they don't want to do it and you know or well you know <laughs> you know they're not going to do it but if you can if someone wants to do it they'll do it yeah for sure we hear a lot of excuses yeah and, and the funny thing about the excuses is the results don't care about your excuses. They don't, they don't care if your mom got sick or if your dog died, they don't care about any of that stuff. Now we as people should have some empathy and and sympathy for those negative things that happens. But when we're talking in a business format, the the results and, and achieving the results that you've identified as your goals that you want to achieve when they don't happen, it it's, it's, because you weren't doing the actions that were required to make it go through. Yeah. Um, with with that being said, I'm wondering if you could just give us, you know, and this is a little bit off the cuff, but like a breakdown of of the the actionable items that you think an agent should be doing on a daily basis and consistently to have a, a successful career. Sure, sure. So one of the things is. Um, And this is my husband always talks to the, as the broker, he always speaks to the agents, new agents about this. Um, Get a calendar, plan your week. How I describe it is when I went to college, I got there and all of a sudden you have 
all this free time. There's no, there's no structure. You can choose. I mean, I'm a rule follower. So I went to class at 830. I thought you had to have an 830 class. So I was at the 830 class and I would go to class, but I know, you know, if you don't have to do anything that you don't want to, and you're on your own, you don't have parents there. So it's, that's kind of how real estate is. All of a sudden you're like, Oh, I got my license. And now what? It's like, yeah, now what structure your days. So in our area, Mondays and Thursdays are broker tour. We call it LA is Tuesdays. Go learn the inventory. I do, you know, that's at least two days of getting to know the other agents who you will eventually be presenting offers to super important, get to know the inventory, get to know the streets. I mean, when, if, when you're not in real estate, you really don't know all the streets and you don't know the houses, you don't know the styles, you don't know what Crocker Highlands looks like to upper Rockbridge, which looks like to Piedmont, which looks like to Berkeley They're you know, they're all different. Same in your area. I don't know your area. I know it's beautiful, but I don't know all the details of it. So you've got to become the expert. So do that. I would do two open houses on a Saturday and a Sunday. So let's say in your area, it's they're usually doing them on Sundays. Well, if someone in your office has a listing, ask them, can I do it on Saturday too? Why would a seller or a listing agent say no? Get it exposed. You want to sell it. So you're starting to build in, maybe write five notes a day, handwritten notes. That's what I was speaking about in my foundation for success, touch points, note cards. When you write a handwritten note, it's so important. It's so nice. And people, I mean, people, I keep my handwritten notes. I love them. I appreciate them so much. Um, And it's very important and people do appreciate that. So writing notes, reaching out. So go through your sphere of influence and maybe write someone, you know, five people a note every day. Um, If it's three people commit to something. Right. And then of course, be, Things are going to come up during during the day, right? Other things will happen. You'll have to, you know, do. Be in the office, number one. So you're you're there and available. So I always tell people, go sit next to Adam. He's he likes to be in the office. I'm kind of all over the place, but Adam likes to be in the office front and center. That's where he likes to work from. Sit next to Adam. You'll listen to what he's talking about. You'll listen to what he's talking to other agents about. You'll learn. So many different things come up, as you know, situations in real estate. So you start to learn. And all of a sudden he says to you, hey, come out on this inspection with me. Now you get to go. It's not your inspection, but you're going out and you're going to go out with someone who's been selling real estate for 35 years. You're going to learn things that you have no idea you would have learned about or would could even arise. So make yourself available. So you start to build in. I can go on, but you start to build in these little these build out your day. Yeah, I think that's hugely important. The people that we've seen have the most success on the investment side or the agent side are the people who are there showing up every day because they're learning things that they didn't even know that they should be asking about because it's what's coming up in the course of and scope of everyday business. I think that's huge. Exactly. You don't even know what you don't know. (laughs) Right. Yeah, that's Um, all good advice for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Debbie, if if any of our listeners wanted to find out more about you, more about what you're doing with with your coaching program or any of that kind of stuff, where could we send them to find out more information? Perfect. So Debbie, D-E-B-B-I, no E in Debbie. So Debbie DiMaggio, like Joe DiMaggio, dot org, Debbie DiMaggio dot org. And then you can go straight to my coaching program to foundation for success dot co. And I just directed that to my Kajabi platform. And I am just so grateful to be on your show and to meet you guys and to know you. And I hope to come down there and see you. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks again, Debbie. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you for listening to the real estate jam. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information, check out our website, therealestatejam.com, or find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Real Estate Jam. If you have any questions, feel free to drop us an email at therealestatejam at gmail.com. See you next episode.